Now, many of you will have already used Cura Cloud before and will be familiar with how to manipulate the traces that we'll be looking at. But for those of you who are not as familiar with the platform, I've made this video just to show you some tips and tricks for how to zoom in, zoom out, how to measure uh, the traces that you'll be getting and so on. So uh, if you already know how to do that and are comfortable with the platform, then by all means, uh, just skip this video. But if you're looking for some tips because you're having trouble working with the, uh, the, the lab chart window and, and the traces that you're getting, then, uh, then just follow along and we'll hopefully uh, give you some tips as to how to use this system here. So what we have here, first of all, is the lab chart window. And this is the window in which the data that has been captured from your tissue will be shown. This is some example data from the nerve prac, uh, but it can be just as easily uh, cardiac muscle, ECG, skeletal muscle, and so on. So, um, so if you have a look at this window, this is what we'll be looking at in this video here. Now there's several channels that can be displayed. Here we've got two channels. The upper channel, the red channel, is showing the response from the nerve. The lower channel is showing an indication as to when the stimulus was applied to the nerve in this particular example, but you can have any number of channels uh, depending on what we need for a particular prac. And so that's what we're seeing on the screen. And now there's several controls around this window. And so we'll be going through what each of those help us do now. If the data being shown in a given channel is too small, as shown here, you can use these controls at the top of each of the channels in order to zoom in or zoom out, depending on what you need. The controls on the side of the data channels are for increasing or decreasing the vertical axis. And the controls in the time channel are for controlling the horizontal axis. Sometimes when you make a recording, the trace that you make will appear off the screen. And so you end up with just what looks like a blank screen. In order to fix that and help find the data, if you click on the auto scale button, then the data will be resized and will appear in your screen. And so that's an easy way to find the data if you can't see anything sitting on the screen and you're expecting something to be there. I'll often use the auto scale button and because the auto scale button uses the full vertical range, uh, sometimes the, the trace that results is a little bit big. So I'll then zoom out by one click in order to make it uh, a nice usable size. Now another example like this is when one component of your data is very big and another component of your data which you may be interested in is very small. Now in this particular example we've got a very large stimulus artifact which we're not particularly interested in but a very small nerve response which we are interested in. So when you click the auto scale button the whole lot is scaled onto the screen uh, and the part that we're interested in uh, is a bit more difficult to see. So then you can just use the manual controls in order to adjust the image now that you've got it on the screen uh, so that it's a size that is useful for you. Now also, in addition to adjusting the size of the response by clicking the plus and the minus button, you can also mouse over that vertical scale and your cursor will turn into a hand and you can left click on that scale and be able to drag it up and down. So you can reposition the data within that window by using that left click. Now one of the most important controls that you'll be using a lot in Cura Cloud is using the marker. The marker is this little white M inside a black box, which is shown in the top left hand corner of the screen. Now, if you have a look at this trace, you can see that the stimulus was applied at about one millisecond after the start of the trace. So it's not applied at zero. The stimulus is actually applied sometime after zero, in our case, one millisecond. When we place a selection point on the graph, we're measuring from zero to the selection point. And so in this case, if we're interested, how long does it take for action potentials to get from the stimulating electrode down to the recording electrode? We want to know how long it takes between the stimulus and the response, not from zero to the response. So in this case, we place the marker where we're trying to measure from. So in this case, from the stimulus. And then when we put the pointer at the response, we're measuring from the marker to the response, not from zero to the response, which is what we're after. So I hope that makes sense. 
And similarly for the vertical axis, you can see that the baseline, which is usually where we're interested in measuring from, isn't exactly on zero, and you'll find that that's often the case. And so we're trying to measure from the baseline wherever it appears to some other point on the trace. So basically the take home message is always use the marker when making measurements on this lab chart data. Sometimes if you're measuring a big data set or a very long trace, the marker won't appear in its little box in the top left hand corner of the screen and you won't see it on the actual visible screen, so it'll be somewhere along the trace. If you just click, left click on the box in the top left hand corner, the marker will return to its box and then you can just grab it to use wherever you are at, the, at that time. Now there's a couple more controls that we might need. Down the bottom of the screen there's this cog wheel. If you click on that, it opens up this set of tools. Now the one you'll be using most often is this solo button. When you take a lot of traces all at once, you'll see that those traces get superimposed over the top of each other, and sometimes, particularly if you've taken a lot of them, that can get a little bit busy and it's a little bit difficult to see what you're after. And so the solo button removes all the other traces and just the active screen is being shown. So to demonstrate, let's go to page four. So now page four is being displayed. If we press on the cogwheel and click the solo button, see how all the other traces, all the other pages are now hidden and it's only the active page which is being shown. Now the next tool that you'll be using a lot is adding a comment. Now I won't actually be going into too much detail about that in this video because you'll see me using it a lot in each of the videos for the experiments. But just for the sake of completion and for anyone who maybe missed the details of how I'm doing it or what I'm doing, uh, let me just quickly show you. You can see the comments box here down below. Now sometimes if the cogwheel is opened, that will be covering the comments box. So if you can't see the comments box and you can just see these buttons down here, uh, then just click the cogwheel again and they disappear. And now you can see the comments box. So let's have a look at it, an example. In this case, we've got page one and I performed that stimulus at one volt. So I want to make a comment one volt so I can remember that for the future. So if I type one volt down in this comments box, I then need to use a selection point in order to add a comment. So I click on this select point button. I then move the selection point to wherever I want the comment. And then click the add button. The selection point then turns grey and you can see down the bottom here that there is a little one volt written at the base of that pointer. That's it for this video. These are the most often used tools in the CuraCloud based practicals. And so hopefully this video has shown you where to find those tools and also given you some tips and tricks on how to use them.